The other day, I went over to Voice Corps, which is the radio reading service for the blind here in Columbus. They asked me to repair their on-air audio console. I put it in mm, 1996 or 97, and over the years, the poor thing has uh, developed some problems, not the least of which is its ability to listen in queue to things that uh, you don't want to go over the air, but you want to get them ready to play. It's a very important thing for an audio console to be able to do. I was told that um, they didn't know what had happened to it. So we started off pretty much blind. The other voice you hear in this video is uh, Chuck. He's been a friend for years. He is blind, and he is the main board operator uh, for Voice Corps during the day. So here we go with a repair of a Audiotronics 2500 on-air audio console. All right, turn the camera on. I have the board pulled out for the Q amp, and we'll see if there's anything on here that is not working. Chuck's in here with me, and he's the guy that actually uses the thing, <laughs> so that would be good to, to know. Um, and I seem to have misplaced right there. Yeah. No, I had another little camera. Oh. oh, it's up here. That's the one I was in charge of. Thank goodness. Yeah. Hey, Chuck, that'd be fun. You want to be, you want to be my cameraman? Oh, sure. Why not? <laughs> um, I worked for Channel 6 for years. <laughs> uh, let's see. So, this is the Q amp. And uh, we're going to see. First test is always to check and make sure that everything is plugged in solidly, which I believe it is. This particular Q amp has not a lot on it. It's got a LM353 down here, which is being used for an audio output, I believe. And what model board is that? This is a 2500 HPC, okay. which I gotta look up. Might want to know. Okay. Pause. Be your host here. I can ask you a question. Are you, are you recording? Yeah, I am now. Okay, so put in the standoff here so that we can get this board up to where we can work on it. And of course, it's this is kind of old timey electronics by today's standards. Well, this board has uh, been in use for 19 years. Okay, well, we can't use that, that thing because the board is made so that you can't use that thing. Love it. Okay. So we just have to have it waggling around in the breeze. Alright, so that's in there. Let's turn her back on again. Hum. Alright, Chuck. Now I should be able to hear Q from Hot uh, 10. 10? 10? Well, that's nice. You have them in your head, but numbered, but I don't. It should be automation. Um, automation 1 and 2? Yes. And if I put that in Q, I should be able to hear it. The Q light came on. I'm assigned to Mono 2. The Q light is on, and there is no audio. No audio with the Q speakers down or up. So, we have to find out if it's even getting there. So, we have the manual out and we'll find out approximately where this thing comes from. Well this must be one that we've worked on before because the page is all ripped up. Okay. Engineers do that. <laughs> they take pages from the stuff and they don't put them back. Well let's see this says same thing with tools too. Hey I never do that. <laughs> no of course not. So they, let's see our cue comes into P1, 61, and 62 into 
part one of U9 and part one of U9 says you is that little audio amp that I was talking about, the LF353. So the LF353, let's get the little scope here. Well, actually, I don't need the scope. I use this. Now, did they plug in or unplug? Are they soldered in? Uh, they are plugged in. Everything in this board is plugged in. Which is the other board's queuing doesn't work either. Nice. Well, I think it was traded out. <laughs> So, let's see, we got a ground pin 3, so everything is chassis ground, alright, and we'll test here, uh, ground, chassis ground, I guess that's chassis ground. How will you know if it's working? Will you hear audio? Yeah, I should be able to hear audio. I got my little thing here. So we're on pin two, the negative input of the LF353, which is pin two, which is right nothing. So there is nothing on pin two of the LF353. Hmm. I'll tell you what, what, if you want to put it in the program position and fade the pot up and make sure there's audio coming through the pot. Uh, program. I mean, on the on the monitor. Speaker. That's what I'm trying to do. I mean, I've got the one, external two, monitor three, four, on now. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. I got ten on program pulled up. Ten B. Ten B. All right. And you see that? There you go. The yeah, it's is, it's okay. okay it's, it's working. working. All right. All right. So let's turn that off and put it back on Q. So it's good to be sure you have audio going through the pot before you... Uh... Still got nothing there. Okay, so we've made sure that it's not getting that far. So it's not even getting to the cue board. <laughs> that's, that's nice. Okay, so let's see if it's actually getting to the... Always check mechanicals. Don't ever forget to check mechanicals. Because they will... Screw you up. Basically, hey, I got nothing coming in. That's because you're not making any contact on the board that feeds it. So it's P1, 61, and 62, according kind of, to this. Kind of playing electronic detective. Yes, really. it is. It really is. Well, of course, 61 and 62 are way down there in the middle. They are, of course, not anywhere near anything else. Okay, so 79... <laughs> okay. Can't tell which one it is. Got to find another resistor because I can't find that from there. The resistor. P1. 61 and 62. So it says 61 is right at the end of R7. So we'll find that. Well, maybe. R7. Wow. Flashlights. Old people need flashlights. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. What I'm hearing is there is only because I've got this thing cranked up all the way and it's like yeah. a times 20 gain. So I'm just hearing bleed over the right. whole mess. All right, so we have decided that it is not getting to the Q amp at all. All right, so we go back a little farther. Okay, so we've discovered that the all of the Q comes directly off of an, the entire bus. Which means that it's going to come from each one of these cards, connect to a bus, and it appears to be just connected straight to a bus with no 
nothing but a little buffer amp on each one of them and comes straight over this way to the cue board. So we'll give it a shot. Chuck says that the three and four work. So one, two, three, four. And that would be, in this case, remote one and cart two, or phone. Correct? Yeah, yeah it's been moved, uh, yes. Huh? Yes, it's been moved. It's, uh, it now has a telephone on uh, 4B. Yes, it does. All right, so we'll pull this out. What did I do with the puller? Here it is. Specific little pulling device. Makes life a lot easier, trust me. Because last time I tried one of these things, I had to pry them out with a knife. <laughs> mm. All right, I already see something that might be of assistance down here. As soon as I pull this out, and we're going to take a picture of this so that I can put it on. In between each one of these things, or at least every fourth one, there's a connector. And the connector might be... And the connector is just a whole bunch of wires connecting one side to the other. Oh, very interesting. So, this particular cord we have is a SI card. Which is, there's a lot of SI cards in here. So we'll find the... Yes, I. CSM, CRM, LO1, LO2, uh, that's a tell, that's a tell. SI, here's the stereo input module, that's what SI stands for. Okay, so our Q logic is down there. And we'll find out from this where that comes from. Right now, we don't have to worry about this because we know that it ain't even getting here. <laughs> so that works. So we can use our standoff card here and here. Plug this in here. Like that. Okay. All right. So now, got a little searching to do. All right. So we've looked through the manual here, and we've discovered that the Q sum or Q output is coming out P one sixty nine off of U fifteen, um, and that's going to be over here. Oh, this little guy. These guys got a daughter board on them, but I don't think that has anything to do with it. Hey, uh, just finish that off. I... All right, so we've got to look for U15, and the output comes from. The... Just taking a glance inside. So, oh, okay. <laughs> well, I was wrong. <laughs> Our uh, audio does come in this little daughter board that's on here, so let's plug it back in. That's one thing about these things is you can't hot swap the boards. So, our audio comes out of U10 for Q. Put it on Q. And, uh, whoops, can't hot swap the boards. That wasn't good. There's nothing to hold these up, unfortunately. I don't think this one will work. Pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. There you go, buddy. You're all, all set. Right. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Oh, this one will work. Uh, all right. You want some coffee, man? Yeah, I'm going to go get a cigarette here shortly, though. Okay. All right. As you saw, we had to swap the board out. Uh, the stand-up, because it... Uh, it popped out. So, what can I give on Q on here? Program. All right. Um, on this, just pick up the phone. Check would that work? Uh, just to give me audio, something. It might work if that uh, coupler is working. Yeah. And you hit hit the right hand button for on the coupler. 
Where's the code? The, the phone subscribe on the phone. There you go. All right. Yes, our cue is working there. Aha! That's interesting. We've got the telephone, which just decided it didn't want to do that anymore. Yeah. Okay, so we've proved that our cue actually does come through off of board three. Does it come off of any other boards besides uh, after four, Chuck? Um, I think pot five works, but I'm not sure. Okay. All right. Well, that's. I don't think it does. But does anything after that work? No. Ha! I don't believe so. Ha! I do not believe so. We have found the problem. Maybe, Miss Mary Grace, we have found a problem. Pit five does, you think, does not work, okay? Five does not, yes. All right, I'm going to cut the tape. I'm cause... pretty sure five going from left to right. Okay. What is your point? Okay, you... we've pulled board five out of here. And uh, Chuck says that he believes that it doesn't work after board five, or board five and after. However, we have something interesting. I don't know if this is going to make any difference or not, but you might be able to see. Focus. Thank you. You might be able to see on here. It doesn't like focusing. I don't blame it. <laughs> Neither do I. Yeah. Anyway, I only focus. Post after post production can be cool. I only focus after five drinks. Yeah, that's how you. There it is, right there. Schmaltz. That's not good. What is schmaltz? Schmaltz. It's crap on the board. Oh. Across the uh, across a bunch of terminals. And what would we have to decide what that is on? That is on the connector from this board. To the daughter board that has the QA up on it. What kind of crap? Uh, uh, yunk. Uh, just, uh, it's been dust and all that. Yeah, it's 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 um, corrosion. This be interesting. And what can you clean that way? <laughs> oh, many things. Uh, none of which we have here. However, if it's I think we have some contact cleaner, crumbling things. That would work. However, how the heck do you get that out of there? Well, we're going to pause for now. Okay, well, we have put the board in. We've fed it some audio. And uh, we're checking to see what's happening. We've got no audio out on cue. And... Did you hear how it peaks and dissolves? Yes. And I think I know why now. Okay. This connector comes out uh, of this little U15, which is a just a switch. It's um, six switches in one little one little package. Comes out of U10 through a capacitor, goes right to there, goes to pin 14 of U15, pin 14 of U15, and of course U15 is going to be this top guy here in the uh, 14 so so this is a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 there so Joyce will begin there it is the do? That's the, that is the input to the switch the, the six it's just six electronic switches in a package that's the input to the electronic switch package. The output of that electronic switch package is pin 13. So 16, 15, 14. There be nothing there. You've There's isolated the problem. Nothing's coming out. Well, maybe. That problem can be several different things. The first one of which is the switch is bad. But I doubt it. I very seriously doubt it. We have to check and make sure with another piece of equipment that we actually do have voltage on that particular switch actuator. These, these electronic switches are exactly that. They're nothing. They're just just a switch. Um, you you apply voltage to 
um, the 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 common the, the 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 common post of it, and it turns the switch on and off. In this case, it's pin 11. So we got DC volts. We'll go to pin 11. So eight, nine, ten, and we got Zippo. No Well, it might ground it. Okay. Let's turn Q off and see what we got on pin 11. Nothing. How do you know Q is off? Is there a light? Yeah. Okay. Which doesn't always work, by the way. Uh, <laughs> no, some of them, that's why. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So my Q logic is not giving me any voltage at all on pin 11. Hmm. Well, that's not possible. Okay, let's try this. Let's see what it's doing in standby mode when it's not on to find out. We got 12. Next time I come I'm going to have to bring clip lead, jumper leads. Okay, so the output is pin 12, well pin 13 when it's not running and pin 12 when the queue is on. So Thirteen. Let's see. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. There's thirteen. There's nothing. There's fourteen. That works when we turn the cue on. Well, that's a crappy switch. Okay. And pin twelve of that switch. Nothing's coming out of that. And pin 11, 11. We're not getting any voltage on pin 11. Okay, let's try something else and make sure that what the, what the voltage is supposed to be, since I really don't know. Um, you gonna look at four? One of these? No, I can I can okay. always do it on one of the other okay. buttons. Um, we have. On that same chip, pin 11, uh, on that's on U15. Pin 9 is for mono. Uh, mono 1. So I can check on pin 9 for mono 1 and see if mono 1 turns on pin 9. That's here. So do you have to put the pot in mono 1? Are those buttons supposed to push down? <laughs> They're supposed to push down and stay down, but they don't. A lot of them don't. Just kind of no, off. there's no voltage on pin 9 either. How about in pin mono 2? It's on pin 10. Would you like me to hold the buttons down for you while you do that? Ah. Alright, let's see. Pin 10. When I push pin 10 down, I got 5 volts. When it's up. Oh, when I push it down, I got 0. Okay, so it grounds them. So 10, 10, 9, 10, 11 is the one that we're looking at for our Q logic. And if I push Q 5 volts, ground when it stays on. Okay, so it does ground them, and it is grounding it. Alright, so we've discovered that. So it is grounding it, and it does work. However, we've still got one more thing to think about. Is it shorting the output out someplace? That we got to figure out. Alright, so we have discovered there is no audio coming out. The switch on this, there's a, um, there's an IC here that's just a bunch of switches. There's audio going in, there's no audio coming out of it, however, it might be a short. But it probably can't be a short, 
because we're getting audio from this other board over here um, I thought we were on source B from the phone. Yeah, we are. We're getting audio from the phone. So, a short on the line going all the way over here to the to the next one. That's not likely. So let's. And what also isn't likely is that all of the rest of these <coughs> have bad outputs of that switching IC. So now we have to think about this for a minute and come up with a thought. Just to satisfy my own curiosity, I'm going to find out if indeed the pin is shorted on the output, which would be pin 12 of this chip. So there's 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. It is not shorted. If it was shorted, I would see it. Okay, let's put it on sound. That gives me voltage to see if it's shorted. And it will beep. No, it's not shorted. Okay. Hmm. Well, now we got to think about it. All right, considering that we know that this pot works and this one doesn't, in this slot, <coughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one here, put it over here, plug in the board, and see, play the cassette, put it on cue, we still have no cue in that slot. Odd. Yeah, that's odd. Alright, let's stop this. go to cassette 2, turn it on, play it, and we got nothing, nothing on cassette 2 either. Wow. Um, So we're, we're, we're very rapidly coming down to the choice of about the only thing left is a mechanical connection on this second board. There's, there's a big board over here that connects all these together, bus board. There's a big board here that connects these together, it's a bus board. And we've got this SI, how about this this SI chuck on uh, CRDAW and line switch? Have you ever even tried that? No. Why would you? <laughs> what you mean as far as queuing? Yeah. Oh yeah, nothing works. Nothing works but pots, uh, you know, one, two, three, and four. Nothing works south of pot four. Well, what would the line switch be? Uh, studio, which nobody's in right now. I can give you a test tone through one of the studios, through Studio Two or Five. Well, this is and this is uh, this is the C the CRDAW. Uh, I'd have to I'd have to come out there and. Well, it's it's on pot you know ten. It ends at ten. Then you've got your line switches. Yeah. Then you've got the CRDAW, um, and then a, another line switch. So it's between these two line switch ones, uh, where you got the, all the production studios out switches. Dave, I have to come and actually press, and, yeah. press something up for you. Okay, well, come on. All right, well, beyond, Are you here's an update. We just, we, just, uh, we just took all of the boards out, as you can see. 
except for the first three that worked here. Um, and we started tracing them back down and found this one that works. This was in number four. I took all of the boards, with these, out, took them all these, out. this, all of them, all the rest of them out, tested them, none of them work. However, plug it in, Chuck, and if it, you'll see that I have this turned on. There's my audio output. Because every night before David went to bed and put it in cue, little, I kissed his There's the cue, and it works. Now Hardison so, is Go ahead, Chuck, unplug it. Beyond all the rules <laughs> of, electronics. of electronics, I have seven bad boards. Seven of them. Seven bad. One, two, three, four, five. I'm sorry. Six. Although, wait a minute. Let's try this. Maybe I do have seven. Let's plug this into here. Go ahead, Chuck. Yeah, you do have seven. Seven bad boards. Six <laughs> Unplug through, it. Pot six through twelve. Yeah. Six, yeah. Seven, eight, six, I have six. seven hey. bad boards. Now we have to troubleshoot it and find out what's bad on these boards. If it's that switch, I see. That would be that little guy up in there. Way up in there. See it? Just wow! This is not. I've been I've been doing electronics for a long time, and I've never really seen seven bad seven boards. bad boards. In Wouldn't one, it be faster just in, order new boards? I had one hundred and ninety nine dollars a piece, um, oh. and not made any more. No, that's okay. a problem with working on some of this stuff, folks. Is this may look modern to you? This was put in what nineteen ninety six? Yes, that's why I asked the question. Nineteen ninety six. I put this board in here. Yes. I'm 98, old. actually, I think. And, 97, uh, 97 it was. Whatever. It's close yeah. enough. Yeah. And um, it's been working every day, all day, ever since, but. Can't get parts? Can't get parts. So if we're going to fix it, we got to tear it apart and fix it. So, uh, to be continued. We are. Okay, gang, we figured it out. Uh, go ahead and plug it in, Chuck. As you can see, I'm. Holding high voltage electronics in my hand. Just joking, it's 12 volts, nobody cares. Not a lot of current, it can care. Battery will kill you. Be careful, don't play around with electronics unless you know what you're doing. End of statement. Okay. Turn on the cue. Beeping because they were sweating there it to is. death. Oh. All I did was replace together, that. But one, alone. One I was mostly. An MC14053 quad switch. Here's Bunch more. Got a bunch more? Well, apparently this is a common a symptom because we've got a bunch of them. <laughs> oh my goodness! Holy cow! All right, there we go. There's a repair. Uh, Excellent. I'll get to the overall summary in a minute. Okay. Well, there you go. There's the repair of the Audiotronics 2500 audio console for voice core. As it turned out, it was indeed seven of those MC14053 uh, CMOS switches. And in retrospect, I suppose I should have thought of that earlier. They are CMOS. They are subject <coughs> to uh, static uh, electricity <coughs> and strikes. So, but you would think it would take most all, or all of them out rather than just the last seven. So there were some red herrings along the way that led us down a garden path. But uh, like I said, we got those over with pretty, uh, pretty quickly. And that gets this board up and working uh, for them to go on the air with it a little bit easier. However, we still have a lot of switches to replace at least a couple dozen of them they're little cheap dollar switches or dollar fifty switches uh, I mean that's yeah, that's not even going to be a video that's not even fun that's just solder sucking and replacing a bunch of bunch of switches so anyway I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, learned something about troubleshooting electronics uh, along the way as always thanks for watching